Okay, so quick little job. <laughs> uh, that's that's just it. Something different besides welding. He does not have a welding uh, wand in his hand, but we've got his journey here. She's toast. Engine went, head gasket went, and drove it a bit too long, and she went. So the transmission's acting up too. So we went to Tuesday, got new uh, used engine and transmission, and we're gonna swap this out. Originally, Vince was gonna look for a new car. With the price of new cars, we're gonna keep uh, the old junk running. So uh, we put a battery in it so we could move it uh, a while ago, but I'm a bit behind schedule. So the battery's already dead again. Otherwise we'd let you hear it, but it would just barely turn over. So she's toast. <laughs> so we're gonna tear it apart and show you guys how to swap the engine on the journey. There we go. Start by removing the air cleaner, and that's a bolt down below here, and then one up here. That'll give you access to the battery, so you can take your negative terminal off right there. Then we can disconnect our grounds, and basically take our entire harness and lay that, keep that with the engine. So one plug right on the uh, computer right here. You take this little red lever and you flip it up and it pushes the plug out. It's a way to lock it in. Then the fuse box, same way. Um, these things, it's got a little tab on it and then you grab both, you flip them up and then pull this whole fuse box assembly on. And what that will show is a uh, plug like this on the bottom with a, with a passageway for the wiring here. So what you do is just pop, pop the little plastic tabs off that hold it in place and take that harness and just lay the whole harness, the whole, whole engine harness comes with the engine and you don't have to disconnect anything else. So now basically we've taken everything from here and shoved it over onto there. Now we got access to our engine mounts, which we'll remove right there, our transmission shifter, um, linkage, and our cooler lines for the transmission. So we'll pop these little plastic things off. There's a little clip underneath there. You pop the lines out. Hopefully they're not too rusted. You're gonna pop this ball and socket off of here and then squeeze the little plastic things in uh, in the holder and leave the leave that there then that rubber boot back there is your steering you gotta disconnect your steering and then your exhaust so we'll try and get the exhaust uh as close to the engine as we can if we gotta take the manifold off we'll take the manifold off but then pull the rims and tire wheels and tires off and take your brake calipers and hang them off on on the frame somewhere with a couple hangers We'll get access to the top of the strut mounts. We'll disconnect them at the top here and there, and then just take the mounts off of the K-frame at the bottom. We're gonna lift the whole car up off of the engine. Uh, coolant lines, obviously, lower rad and upper rad. Uh, take them off. There's no coolant in this engine anymore, which is why it failed. You gotta keep an eye on your fluids. You gotta keep your fluids happy. Um, your brake hose can just pop right out of your booster here or Maybe we'll just disconnect it somewhere else, but you got your brake booster. And then your air conditioning. Um, we're just gonna take the compressor off of the engine, leave that in there. That way we don't have to disconnect the AC lines and recharge the lines. And might do the same with the power steering pump. We're just gonna take this off, lay it off to the side. Maybe we'll see if that works. Otherwise, you know what? No, we're just gonna disconnect the lines, put new, uh, new fluids in there. And then, uh, that's the majority of it, but well, we'll keep you updated. Uh, do things nice and quick. Um, if you need, that's your guidance. If you need exact information on how to flip that little red lever up or how to pop your fuse box off, then this might be a bit too much of a job for you. Um, hoist is very much recommended. Here we go. Move the plastic clip. Now the cover on the on around the windshield. You don't have to take the windshield arms off. You can slide it up and over. It just needs to get out of the way. And then we can take the strut bar off and then we can get out our strut. Okay, so we were fortunate on the exhaust underneath. We were able to pull the cat off. We got all the bolts off our manifold. We're gonna get a new gasket. Uh, but those bolts do pop out the back, so you can replace them. Take the power steering line off the return because this stays with the frame. This like the frame of the car and this stays with the subframe. Uh, we gotta get that power steer or the steering linkage off. But I think we're gonna drop it from the inside because that looks like uh, I can't really get that boot up. Other than that, uh, take your O2 sensors out so you can take the cat off and not much down here, but then we'll take this bracket off 
and here and then the mount up here and then um should be some at the front here maybe not no dodge likes to keep it simple uh, we'll take the ac compressor off here tuck that off to the side here we don't have to charge the system and we're golden okay so the u-joint is accessible right here you see it take that bolt out uh 13 mil and then you can slide it right off of the shaft that's up behind there see the nub sticking out right there super easy just leaves a bolt on the floor doesn't matter and then we're ready to take the shuts off do not take that center bolt out but take the three around the outside down and then three 16 millimeters on the left and three 19 millimeters on the right and then the mounts down below will support it on some axle stands a drop at the bottom done bam here we go everything disconnected we've got our bolts out of our mounts on the two front and on the two back um, and now basically we want to lift it up a little bit and just make sure that um, because now we're taking about 700 pounds from the front that the car is balanced on the hoist properly so it doesn't tilt up um, and now we just push a button and make sure that everything's disconnected and lift the car up and then we got a nice workstation standing there we got axle stands all the way around just holding up the frame and the engine make sure that doesn't tilt and the ac compressor we unhooked and just tied that with a bungee cord to the front so it doesn't get in the way here we go <laughs> Okay, there it is. So now we can disconnect uh, the axle shafts easy. We can get out everything really simple um, and uh, move everything over from this engine over to our new engine. Um, we, uh, we cut the belt because it's crusty and cracked. So it's time for a new one of those. The other mechanics just cut the wiring harness, which is a shame because all you have to do is un disconnect that one little plug and then everything just comes with it you just one plug one bolt one two grounds and ecu but done so um yeah we'll take this off we'll show you guys how to get into that move everything over put it back and then drop it right back in again so nice and easy look at that and actually this car is well worth doing because it's not half as rusty as i expected it to be we are in uh, the rust belt in southern ontario and even though that looks really bad most of the nuts and bolts came out pretty easy so we only snapped one on the ac compressor right in here and we should be able to get that out with some heat and then just replace the bolt so here we go okay so now we need to make that look like that um we'll start by uh, i think these coils have been replaced so we're going to put these coils on there um, throw some new spark plugs in it and um, basically move everything over. We're going to start by pulling off all of the half hoses and half um, clips because they just cut everything, which is probably more work. But if you just take the plug off, I don't understand people. Um, I would have saved everybody time and money, but here we are. I'm probably going to move the throttle body over. We'll bolt up the transmission. Um, luckily I lost one of these clips, so I have one of these clips extra now <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll just unplug everything and move everything over and this is just slow, tedious work. Uh, we'll, we'll just disconnect everything first and then we'll go from there. you can get access through uh, a little plate at the bottom of the bell housing on the engine side. Um, we can put our mount on underneath there now. Uh, I didn't take the manifold off, don't wanna wreck that gasket, but uh, now we can stick our starter 
And through here, I didn't disconnect any of the wiring because um, it's not, these clips suck. Let's try to keep as much of the wiring on it as possible. We're gonna snake that through. And as soon as we have all everything plugged back in again, then we can put our alternator in place and our power steering pump and all our hoses. Now each one of these clips, what a pain. Some of these, they release them by pushing at the back. Some of them you push in the middle and some of them you pull up on the front. So when you can't see, it's kind of a guessing game as to uh, what that engineer decided to put in that place at that time. A bunch of crooks. If you ask me, just do it all the same. Every size bolt on this thing, so much fun. So much fun, we're having so much fun. Here we go. brakes, uh, CV shaft, engine. Uh, sorry for the lack of videos or me sounding a little bit not my cheery self. It's because I'm working on rusty old Dodges and it's not my favorite thing to do. Uh, that thing fell off the stands when I beat it with a hammer or an ax. And uh, so I put some string just on the bolts just to line it up. It's more stable now, which is fine. But the biggest thing was I moved everything over. No big deal, not a problem. But then I went to move my mount on the back here and the mount for the oil pan is different. So this engine, even though it's exactly the same, it's oil pan, it must not have been out of a journey. So there was a hole that went up into here. Now, not the end of the world because this is nice and strong and that's where it braces. But I had vents weld, um, just a bracket on the other side just to make it stronger. So we welded this whole bracket on here and that goes up onto the oil pan right there. Uh, that should take care of that. Just a giant pain in the neck. It never goes like you planned. And I don't wanna be doing this. But anyway, we're gonna be moving this over. We'll throw the, oh, and the CV shaft. I've been waiting for it for three days. It's taking up my hoist. I gotta get something else on the hoist. So this isn't going according to plan. I might have to put the wheel bearing in and just roll it out um, and then finish it later. I don't know, but for tonight, we're gonna roll it back up. We're gonna put it back on again and drop the car back down, bolt up at least some of it. I just, ah, don't do this. Just go down south and buy a new car. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so I'm close. New alternator, brakes are there, wheel bearings are there. Change that frame filter to a nice AC Delco. And then uh, we can lower it back down again. And basically everything else is just reverse. So disassembly, um, hopefully hopefully it works. One ABS sensor broke inside. I thought it was a wheel bearing, that they're in the wheel bearing, but they're not. So you gotta pull the ABS sensor out when uh, you lift up. So now we gotta get a sensor on the other side. Hopefully that's not a big deal. We'll knock that out but I kind of want to bolt it up tonight or at least have it sitting down closer. Here we go. Guys, I originally thought it was a head gasket that went, but this fitting broke. You can see the coolant laying underneath there on that hose. So that cool that that little plastic T broke. She lost the coolant. Um, it was too close to home because oh I can make it home. I can make it home, but um, didn't make it home <laughs> and overheated the engine and nuked it. So I'm gonna replace that fitting because that's what happened. There was actually one coolant line I was saying to Vince, I didn't disconnect that hose, but it was off before we lifted or did anything. So that is the culprit right there. A little uh, 10 cent T destroyed an entire engine. 
But um, I'm gonna leave it hanging there for now because my axles are supposed to be in first thing in the morning, hopefully. If they're not, like I can put this side together, it's not a big deal, but it's easier to put the axle in when you can take the shock and just tilt it forward. So I'm lined up good. I can lift up, drop it back down again. Um, we're going to stop right there and I should have enough time to put it together tomorrow and do what I need to do yet. So here we go. Good decision to wait because I got my axle. All right, lift her back off again, throw it in. It, it, it'll be quick. <laughs> Okay, so I bolted everything back on again. We got the brakes on. We got the new CV shaft in there. We got the new wheel bearing on that side. But we have an issue, and that's this transmission doesn't want to shift. Um, this was pretty well seized. I can get it to move, but just barely. And I thought maybe there was a shift lock in here because it was pretty tight, and so was the other one. Um, so I put the uh, fuse box back on again. I charged the battery. I, I, I plugged everything back in again, like a couple things like math and that aren't plugged in yet. But turn the key on and I cannot move this shifter. So I went to the other transmission and it was also super tight, but when I really reefed on it, I could get it to move. So this thing is seized. Always something. I'm gonna try and heat this up. I did spray uh, penetrating oil in there and it does move a little bit now, but it's always something. I hate old rusty shh garbage anyway i'm gonna try and warm it up and then uh see if i can get that to break free we'll spray a bunch of penetrating fluid in there and go from there much better it'll actually move now I was really worried there for a minute that I had to pull this little thing back apart again. And granted, I did check this on the other transmission. It seemed just as tight. And I didn't want to reef on it just in case. I thought, you know what, it has to be plugged in for something to let go in there. But that makes me feel better. It's unseized now. It'll probably leak. All the transmission fluid will probably come out now because there's probably some sort of seal in there and that's burnt to a crisp now. <laughs> Anyway, we're gonna keep putting stuff together and cross our fingers and hopefully drive this thing out of the shop today. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so screw it up again. Uh, this is the idler that was on there. And as you can see, that is the pin to lock it and it's not retracting. So this thing is seized. So I had to go to the old engine and grab the old one. That was tight, but it's, it's good now. Lubed it right up. Um, so when you set these, you take this, you spin it, and then it, there's a pin there somewhere. And then you can stick a little bolt in there and that'll keep it so you can put your belt on and you pull the pin out and then it'll go like that. And that's fine, but I should have done this when the engine was on the ground because it's a lot tighter when it's in the car. So learn from me and uh, make sure that everything is on. I couldn't put the belt on because the AC compressor was hanging down, obviously. But then you got to take the idler off to get at the bolt to get the tensioner off. And it's tight in there. It's not fun. <laughs> I'll be fine. Not gonna record this because you're gonna learn a new language. Here we go. <laughs> So to fix the T's, I got a couple of brass fittings, um, four barb fittings and one pipe because it's a different size because of course they changed this end is bigger than this end. So um, 50 bucks, 50 bucks from a store that charges way too much. 
it's getting out of hand. The price gouging in small towns is insane. But we don't really have anywhere else to go, so we got to do it. Um, and now these plastic fittings, they're, uh, they're as brittle as can be. So you can just take a pair of pliers and just squeeze them and they'll just shatter. I uh, just got to make sure that all the, it's not even a plastic, it's like a composite and it just doesn't take the heat. So um, it breaks. So we got it like this already broke, but the fitting is still in size. I got to take the hose off, squeeze everything together, make sure that it's empty, clean it. And uh, they're all weird hoses with different angles on them and stuff. So I can't, I can't um, just replace all the hoses because I need something that looks like this. So the hoses are okay. There's nothing wrong with the hose. It's just those stupid couplers are junk. So we'll change them over, pipe dope all those up, and uh, away we go. A good chance to get rid of these useless things. Replace them with some hose clamps that we had just stocked up from Prince's Auto. Much better. Okay, put everything else back together again. Got the air filter in and the air filter housing. And then I looked at this rad cap and somebody took the steel pipe and shoved it in here. Just, just sort of-ish. And then uh, put the hose on. So, ordered that too, because can't have that going. It'll squirt all over the place. This composite is disgusting. This is why I've owned 12 Dodges or so, but I've never had one on the road because they all had Cummins in them and I ripped the Cummins out and put them in a decent build because this is just pathetic. This this cheap plastic garbage. Better needle nose, not very strong. Take a look at that. Just, it's just completely brittle. Just so pathetic. You can just take chunks out of it. All right, got a nice new air filter. I'll throw that in. Good to go. Got a new uh, coolant line. So we'll throw that in. Um, looks much better than that. And even though it will break again, this car will be right off long before then because the rest of it will rot away. So I'm okay with this composite. I'll well, probably get about 10 years. If your journey or your Dodge is 10 years old, take a good look at these fittings. Um, we'll throw the rest of it back together again, put some coolant in it, and uh, we got some new tires on from Toosley. So these are the tires off my old van. So you can see there's lots of meat left on them. Um, good enough for uh, to pass safety again. Uh, we did uh, knock one of these tire sensors off, or I didn't, Toosley did. So I grabbed the flat tire and... Um, I got a new tire pressure monitor sensor from round two tires in town. So nice supporting everybody in town. Um, check out Tuesday, check out round two and uh, keep your old stuff on the road. So a little bit more buttoning up to do tire that we got to check everything uh, twice. Make sure that everything's tight. All the fluids are in there. See if she runs. Here we go. Oil is there. Good. And Oil on the transmission, that's good. Okay, I have to cut off the one clamp on the exhaust. So hopefully that leaks, because then that'll mean that it's running. Turn the key, see what happens, and hope for the best.
Success! Okay, check out the fluids again. It's supper time. And uh, yeah, there she is, running. Sounds pretty good, actually. So make sure that it moves. I gotta hook the steering up yet. Um, and then uh, we're good to go. Okay, so Vince, you know we do engine swaps here, and I know yep. you said you really like the sound of that two stroke Detroit. <laughs> so I got a surprise for you. Yeah, I will uh, hook up the steering and then take it down the road. This is probably its third engine already. Really? Yeah, because once I got into it, I'm like, you know, it's it's um, it's a wrecker motor when you've got writing on it like that, right? Mm -hmm. I think the other one had it too. Okay. So yeah, hopefully this is the last one. But <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I just got to do the steering. That uh, this was new. Those were what was leaking. So uh -huh. so it snapped. You yeah. lost all your coolant, and she was probably close to home. Yeah. Okay, so we spent the money where we had to brakes the cv axle the wheel bearing can't really get away with that and those are kind of the little hidden costs that kind of raise the the price up so we, we managed to swap the tires because they just need tires that need air so they're a little bit dirty from the yard but we'll just throw some rust-oleum uh, tire shine on there and when vince gets his new van or whatever this thing is suv back home his wife's gonna be so happy You're like did you get me new tires yep yes i did hon all the fluids ran it a couple times i parked it outside let make sure that nothing was leaking checked all my fluids again so power steering transmission coolant and engine oil and then uh, made sure the belt wasn't running off sideways that the idler was okay retorque the tires and um now i think the only thing left is to take it for a little test drive and then drop it off but i've spent way too much time on this already so if it doesn't leak and it doesn't sound bad we're just gonna drop it off of this place here we go okay so test drive we're listening for any noises. You turn the fan off, you turn the uh, radio off, listen for any weird noises, rubbing, clicking, um, hissing, banging, uh, ticking, any stutter. You basically just wanna make sure that everything sounds good. Uh, doesn't sound like any exhaust leaks. We need to go get an alignment done on this because we've taken that whole frame and we're, we're able to move that frame around a little bit, the K-frame. So we'll uh, get Vince to take care of that. So far, so good. It's shifted three times. Um, the torque converter might not lock up until it reaches a certain temperature. So we're doing 1800 at um, 50 mile an hour, 60 mile an hour, 60. So we're all good. Uh, I got the ABS light, the tire light is on, so we'll have to get uh, the tire monitors synced to the car. And the ABS, was one wire is broken, so we'll get Vince to track that down in the scrapyard. He's got to do something. They parked this in 2019, I believe, and in 2019, this was a scrap vehicle. The engine was nuked, transmission was no good, ball tires, no brakes, um, and uh, I think we ended up selling Vince our Honda Civic, um, or Aaron did. Now, times are different, it's 2022, parts are a lot more scarce, uh, new vehicles are, in, in, are unavailable. In Canada, there's still a shortage, so you can order your tires, but you'll get them in 2023. And um, uh parts are more expensive but it still makes sense to fix something like this now i did this um it still didn't make sense for me even with the hoist and the proper tools i spent way too much time on this because it's still a southern ontario 10 year old vehicle that's rusted and a couple broken bolts really slow things down if you're more down south you could take this approach, but if I did it again, I would 100% tell him to keep an eye out for a smashed up journey. Something that's been T-boned or hit in the back. Somewhere where the engine's still okay, where I could just take that whole subframe out um, with, with something that was already running and driving and moving and, and take this subframe out, that same K member, with the engine transmission and everything still bolted to it and then just bolt that right back up again. That's what I did with the Saturn. You can go back and check that video about a cheap Saturn for 1500 bucks. Got a really nice new interior for it. it. Had the nice cocoa leather inside 
Um, and we got the new engine and transmission. So I got another 120,000 kilometers out of that setup. It cost me 1,500 bucks. This was a lot more expensive and it took a lot longer. So really know what you're getting into, but we're all kind of going to be forced to do this. Keep your old stuff running longer. Change your oil, get some good Pennzoil in there. Keep your engine and transmission and everything running properly and long because you're going to have to make things last a lot longer. It's going to be a tough uh, uh, year ahead of us for sure and um, uh, that's all there is to it. We have to make our junk last longer. So we're glad to help Vince out. Um, he's a great guy. I wouldn't do it for anybody else. Um, and we get a lot of emails still, can you work on our stuff? We don't work on our stuff. We've got our own projects. Um, we're full-time YouTube, building our own projects. I know you guys are always itching for more of our content. It is stuff like this that I do um, just to help people out locally and Vince is uh, always ready to weld. I think this is Vince's payback making me work on this rusted pile of garbage of all the crappy aluminum I made him weld over the last year. So we're even now Vince. I'm sorry. I apologize for making you work in that garbage because I understand completely how it feels now. So um, thanks for watching guys. <laughs> I think we're good as long as we don't have any leaks. Uh, we are good to go. Um, and I'm going to drop this thing back off again and that's it. So back on projects, um, as we always are, uh, we appreciate you guys watching regardless. Definitely put your input down below if I did something or missed something or, or your experiences with something like this. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. You got to get out there and work on it. It's not going to fix itself as Vince learned, um, just looking at it in his driveway for two or three years. <laughs> Here we go.